the Republicans are very critical of the rebellion, right? They have a lot to say about the evil of civil war and the evil of the rebellion. What do the Democrats have to say about the rebellion? Kim. Like Eli said in the third resolution, it talks about a shameful violation of the Constitution. Um, and they talk about holding a revolutionary um, to resist this power that Lincoln's using. Yeah. They're more upset with Lincoln, right? They're, they're in a political opposition. So they're not going to praise Lincoln, which is understandable. But notice that they, they have harsher words for Lincoln, much harsher words, and really nothing criticizing the Confederacy. I mean, when I read through this, I don't really see any criticism of the Confederacy who is up in arms. I see an olive branch appeal, hey, let's get together and have a convention of the states and try to negotiate peace and bring you back in the Union. But the, Confeder the, the Democrats don't understand that the Confederates aren't going to compromise. They don't want to compromise. They don't want to come back into the Union. They want to be their own pro-slavery republic. And so I think there's a naivete on the part of the Democrats here, and also a sense that they see a connection between themselves and the Confederates, whereas the Republicans see the Confederates as the enemy. And to the points that Jeremiah and Kim pointed out about the secession and revolution, when they talk about revolution here, they're saying, if Lincoln keeps violating our rights, we have a right of revolution. We have a right to overthrow Lincoln's administration. And, you know, because the Democrats had nothing bad to say about the Confederates, rumors started spreading in the, in the newspapers that the Confederates had written this platform for them. And, in fact, the New York Times said the convention was made up entirely of, quote, black-hearted traitors. And so, again, this treason issue is going to be central to this election.